Let's start off by having a look at how we can be more visually stunning and interactive using FireMonkey. So we're back to one of our old favourites, Fish Facts. And in here we've got uh, a form which we've used to display some data up for a record. The application is then looping through the data set as it loads and creating a record form for each record in the data set. And it's then building those forms into kind of a filing cabinet view here that I can flick through to see the data for each form or for each record. This area here is my form and I can see here we've got a reflection effect applied to that form and that is then giving us a complete reflection underneath of what's going on. So as we move around we can see here we have different reflections for each form. We're able to edit the data um, so we'll call this a hello world fish and as we move off and move back we can see that's maintaining in there we can use our scroll bar here to move through as well all the animation that you're seeing here is managed through telling our layer where to move from and where to move to and how to move there over a certain time period. So let's break this application down and have a look. So if we have a look under the hood, as I was saying, we've got a, a load data which is creating a, a list. Our list is just a helper unit that we've written here to maintain our list of records. Each of those records is still linked back to the data set. We've got our parent data set here. But we're literally creating from each record as we loop through, we're creating a form and that form at the time it's created is picking up the current record and showing that record through. So if we have a look at our 3D layer in here, we can see our 3D layer list is literally just a, a list with a list of 3D layers in there. Now a 3D layer is here we're using a, a custom T extended layer 3D, we're just extending it slightly and that's just to be able to manage um, a destruction for managing some form uh, ownership. In here we have our, our layer, our extended layer, and this has on here some scaling. So we're able to, we're able to set the scaling of it to be one to one and then as we move it back and forth we're using the manager to change the size of the scaling so we can actually make the form smaller and bigger and that maintains the aspect ratios. This is our controls demo it says we have a full set of UI controls. Everything from uh, an edit to a list box. We've got panels, speed buttons, we've got a new call out panel which has got this nice little pointer on the side of it. We've also got the ability to add controls inside controls. So here we've got an image and a label embedded into a button. And each of these controls has got a hit test turned off. Hit test is a new property which allows you to say if you want to capture the mouse, click on it, or if you want it to go through to the parent control. We've also got a uh, number boxes and a whole load of other controls. Something that we can do with the controls, because FireMonkey is drawing absolutely everything, we're able to do things that we never would be able to do before, like rotate controls, change the opacity of controls, and also we can take our entire form here and we can pop it into 3D space and spin it off and back. Now what's really cool about FireMonkey is because everything is vector drawn we can also scale things around so as we saw in the previous demo we had things scaling into the background and then bigger into the foreground you can scale the whole form up for them. But as you can see, this is fully scaled 
and everything because it's vector drawn maintains the sharp round edges all the way through. We can also here is another example of embedding controls within controls. There's some really nice expander panels which you can put controls into, uh, memos and so on. There's also a number of new controls like cornered buttons where you can have round corners on buttons um, there's uh, a spin box which is quite nice, some hue and colour trackers and even a tree view um, list items. Now what we can do is we can apply styles to these, so if we choose the dark style everything's going to change to the new style that's applied to the application. If we choose the Mac style then we can see everything's looking a bit more like it would on Mac 